What does it mean to gain access to electricity? Sister Malawi! Sister Africa! In Malawi, only one in seven people have access to electricity. For most people, having access to a light switch or a common electrical appliance is a luxury. Gaining access to electricity may have a transformative impact on people's lives. It may facilitate housework and provide adequate home space for homework and study. It may provide new livelihood opportunities, powering everything from a grain mill to the lights advertising a local shop. In Malawi in recent years, there have been modest gains in facilitating people's access to electricity networks, but progress is lagging. At the rate the overall population is growing, these modest gains appear insignificant. Access to electricity alone does not solve the challenge of providing access to electricity to people who depend on lower incomes. For example, many households in Malawi pay a higher percentage of their income on electricity than in the UK or Europe. Many people ask for a transformation of energy systems, a transition to renewable energy sources and to less wasteful consumption practices. In Malawi, such an energy transition needs to bring forward an increase in the rates of access to electricity and improve the resilience of communities. Standalone energy systems, such as mini-grids, provide alternatives to facilitate access to electricity a mini-grid consists of off-grid networks, including one or more interconnected sources of small-scale electricity generation, such as photovoltaic or hydropower systems. Mini-grids are particularly effective in facilitating electricity access in remote rural areas in countries like Malawi. Mini-grids also enable the deployment of renewable technologies, Hence, accelerating the energy transition. At the same time, mini-grids provide nimble, flexible systems that can easily spring back into shape after crises, whether they are generated by minor technical challenges or massive disasters. Mini-grids are particularly important to build resilience in marginal communities, which are often disproportionately exposed to climate change impacts. Many of these standalone energy systems are managed by communities themselves. When communities make decisions about the operation of mini-grids, they help to adapt standalone systems to their own needs. Community energy systems facilitate efficiency gains in the development of renewable energy through off-grid networks. However, the most important benefit of community energy systems is the development of energy systems that respond directly to the needs of people. The project Community Energy and the Sustainable Energy Transition in Ethiopia, Malawi and Mozambique CSET, aims to understand how community energy systems work in practice and the influence of different material and regulatory contexts on their development. And We would like to share with you the stories of four mini-grids projects in different areas of Malawi in the words of the people who have made those projects possible. I'm Arnold Katsponye. I come from Lange Electricity Generation Agency Limited. Uh, in short, we call it Mega Limited. This is a social enterprise that is providing hydroelectricity to communities around Mulanje Mountain, a Bondo village to be specific. Uh, currently, we are generating 220 kilowatts, and uh, this one we are able to supply to 1,618 customers. Out of these, 400 are 
businesses, uh, whom in our case we classify them as the three phase uh, connections. And uh, we have eight men's mills. But the ones that are directly benefiting from our electricity at the moment, they are at 6,400. But those that are indirectly, then they come to around 13,000. And 18 for under what we call the social uh, customers, uh, like the churches, uh, the schools. We do have 10 schools, uh, one healthy facility, and seven churches. gift Over time, due to population growth, uh, it was deemed that the uh, environment is getting depleted by each day. And one of the things that we identified as the key driver to the degradation is the use of biomass by communities as a source of wood for cooking. So one of the things that they found out is like Moranje Mountain, as big as it is and as forested as it is, it has a lot of perennial rivers. And this water just goes down uh, to the Indian Ocean. So we felt these perennial rivers and looking at the topography, of the area that we are in, we looked, Morea looked at it and said there is potential and we find out it's possible to get some good uh, electricity from these rivers. So we started the project as a community project. It was done in consultations. So they were kind of welcome to any idea that would save uh, the environment. Today, if you go to, to Bondo or in our community and you would want your hair done there, it will be done. So they have hair salons. They are doing baking and selling fritters. And they economically, they are empowering themselves. Now they have the economic muscle. They, they can even send their children to school. They, they can even take their young ones to hospital if they get sick. So that has come uh, on a very uh, positive not amongst the community members around Bondo. My name is John Silas. Uh, our organization is uh, called Chipopuma Power, and actually in Livingstonia, Rumpi district. Northern Malawi. There we are generating electricity for the community. So far we have connected 85 houses but uh, it is not supporting only 85 houses. I should say we are supporting about 2,500 people because from the electricity we are generating we have the maize mill which people are coming to mill their maize and we have also connected to the primary school where most of the kids go and do night studies. So it's a number of people that are benefiting from uh, the project. And it has also do a like lot of employment in the community because we have connected to a press called Intende Home Craft Care and also the press called Yeo, where they are making some jewelries and necklaces. The project uh, started in 2015. Uh, at the first time people used to travel like long distances to charge their phones as well as to access the maize mill. So the coming of Chipopoma people are having the nearby maize mill as well they are charging phones nearby. There is a uh, few guys that are having barber shop, video shows and some people have opened like bars that are selling cold drinks. So I should say a number of people that have benefited a lot. I would say that we are working together with the women. Just because we had a board of 13 people, a number of more people is the women's because there is only four guys and there is 
uh, the rest are the ladies. So I think at the gender, we are always trying to empower the women. The main challenges are financials. Imagine we started in 2015 until uh, last year's when we started uh, producing electricity, that was in July 2021. So it has been a very long way just because of the funds. Uh, lucky enough, we have the UNDP that funded us. As of now, we're still like, struggling because yet we are having few customers that are connected. So we are not correct enough to pay the people working as well as to maintain the system. In the future, I would like to connect like more people. Then in the coming years, we'll be able to stand on ourselves without asking for funds. My name is Longezo Bingrasson. I'm coming from uh, Nsanje, representing Churches Action and, and Relief and Development. I'm working on a project called Sustainable Energy for Rural Communities. We have implemented four mini grids uh, supporting the irrigation schemes, uh, the energy kiosks, and the households, as well as the schools and the hospitals. We managed to support about 18,000 people in Malawi. The project itself is that is owned by the community, maintained by the community and operated by the community. We introduced some irrigation schemes whereby we supported about 800 families and then we introduced the, other, the energy kiosks whereby uh, we are putting some lanterns, solar lanterns, so that each and every home can have a lighting facility for their homes. They should not be living in dark. Yeah, currently we are proposing uh, to boost the systems uh, so that they can meet a certain demand and then we are also proposing to have a subsidy on connections. We wanted to reach a number of about 300 households. There are people that want to connect to the communities but for someone to, to be connected, he or she has to pay a connection fee of about 20,000 kwacha and then she has also to buy um, the materials for connections like the poles, the LV wires, the twin wires, all the materials are involved are very expensive for someone to, uh, to connect on its own. People used to destroy the environment by cutting down trees, burning charcoal, tilting the land, and then not even replacing it. But the coming in of the project shifted those things. They now concentrated in making small businesses like charging phones, watching televisions. They are making money through video shows. They are making money through uh, selling of lanterns. They are also making money uh, through the irrigation schemes that uh, we have introduced. About 800 families, they are now able to generate money through irrigation schemes. And they have shifted from destroying environment and uh, now they are making money through the initiatives that we have brought in the areas, in the communities. Community Energy Malawi currently uh, operates an 80 kilowatt um, solar mini grid in Stolo village and this currently covers three villages of Molosio, Stolo and Indawambe with about 698 customers and is still connecting others, targeting at around 1,200. And the project came about uh, around 2016. Uh, previously, we had worked in the same uh, community when UNDP came up with um, uh, a call for proposal 
uh, where they were looking for independent organizations who could you know, imp implement uh, mini grids. We opted for that community because we had already had a good relationship with them. From there, I think there were like about one or two key issues that came out. Uh, the first one was um, the need for uh, maize milling services. You know, in Malawi, maize is our staple food, and usually it has to go to a maize mill, uh, have it ground into some good, good flour. Uh, women then, uh, because that's a women's job uh, in Malawi, uh, they were trekking like uh, 18 kilometers to either uh, the Nchinji district headquarters or they were going to the neighboring uh, Zambia. So that came out as a need. And then the second thing that we noted was uh, this is a community that is, is vibrant with a lot of um, you know activity, a farming community. Yeah, so they also said, you know, uh, we would want as much as possible to have electricity because there are other things that we are limited that we can't do because we don't have electricity. Dino sanga ala jifanya mpamvu ya magetsi. Kubela kwa magetsi kwa nipi ndura kwa mbili. Maga maga kukula kwa mpamvu ya magetsi. Fandu utopeza la iti. Usi gundu sana. Ndu mato wapanga fizi, si upeza masikuwa fizi. Kumaso ndi kakulua shima angani matoto nolo usiku. Kwa mroba ndi roko ndura kwa mbili jifanya mpamvu ya magetsi mene. Not many of them could afford to do the wiring. Uh, of their houses like the security uh, installations and uh, with UNDP we had a discussion and we agreed that uh, we provide uh, some support, a soft loan of some sort whereby each household that pays 20,000 kwacha as connection uh, fee and we recover that uh, as they are using the electricity. So with that we are able to at least have 150 customers when we are commissioning and now we've got about 698 customers just because of the same system. We have about 255 panels in total. So each panel is 320 watts. So our 600 to 700 DC voltage, the one is just charging batteries inside the container I've seen behind me. On the storage part, we have about 474 batteries. Each battery is 2 watts because we're working on the security issues. If somebody wants to steal the batteries, it means that he needs to steal how many batteries, 6 batteries to be used which will be difficult. So that's why we came up with that design, so that somebody if you want to steal, they let him steal six, six batteries. We have uh, an engineer who is in charge of the whole thing, but then we identified about 30 youths in the community, men and women, boys and girls, and these 30 youths were trained uh, by Mzuzu University. So they are the technicians and the food soldiers who sort of like uh, go around, you know, uh, uh, operation and maintenance of house circuits as well as the mini grid itself. So we have this whole lot of at least expertise within the community that is helping us minimizing on the cost, but at the same time making sure that we sustainably uh, operate the system. Well, uh, we started very small and I think all our interventions were more or less like piloting them. I think we are just this type of organization which believes that uh, when there are no good regulations, probably it's the time for us to act so that we demonstrate that these things work. Uh, and when others will be coming, we are the trailblazers. We have cleared the way and others they will see it better. So this is, we can say these types of projects can be actually replicated or duplicated in other types. Of, so in most of the rural areas, we have the water, we have the sun, and also we have the wind. So by installing solar panel and also wind turbine and also mini hydro, so we can achieve to actually to electrify the near to one billion people throughout the world. The advantage of mini hydro as compared to that of solar panel is both of them has their own advantage and disadvantage. So for mini hydro, as far as you have the water, you can electrify 24-7. So the solar time, so you sometimes it is, if it is rainy, if it is dark, and also the capacity is low, you can you have to wait up to the, the battery is actually charged. So you have to store the, the, the electric power on the solar panel. But for hydro power, you don't need to store. So the power is already there. It is, it is instant types of generation. But solar for, the, for night time, you have to store a battery. So the change of electricity, having electricity on the rural community is actually a big change. Having a light is 
a very essential part of our community. People are actually save their time and also their labor to collect fuel for, for, for the lighting purpose. Students can actually study at the night. They can actually charge their mobile without going to uh, like 30 to 40 kilometers to charge their mobiles. They can actually be connected for a telephone communication. So that is, it definitely dramatically change the, the, the life of the community. Africa. Community energy systems have a lot of potential to respond to the challenges of energy in Malawi and other countries facing similar challenges in energy access. These projects demonstrate how community energy systems develop from the efforts of individuals who work locally, taking advantage of the resources available to them, bringing together multiple sources of funding and technology and developing new means of providing electricity to their own communities. With appropriate support, these pioneers can transform the energy system and the lives of their communities. Mm -hmm.